What's going on guys? So today we're gonna talk about meal prep. I'm gonna give you guys some really cool ideas on how to prep your food efficiently and make it taste good. I'm gonna give you guys my very own kebab recipe that I've been using throughout my entire diet and I'm gonna teach you guys how I prep everything. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and we're gonna get started with the meat prep. All right, so for the meat prep, I really like to do it the night before just so that the meat has time to marinate and soak up all the flavors. So as you can see, I have a big pack of chicken here and I also have a really big pack of beef. I believe this is round eye roast beef. So there's three main ways that you can cook your meat when preparing for meal prep. You can throw everything in the slow cooker, you can throw everything in the oven, or you can grill everything. The slow cooker is by far the easiest method just because you just throw in the meat. And by the way, what I'm showing here is the fat cap on the roast that I like to take off while the roast is one big piece. So slow cooking is the easiest way to do it. You just throw in your meat, throw in the spices you want, throw in a little bit of water or broth, and then you leave it on overnight and you'll have meat in the morning. But what I find with the slow cooking is that it tends to dry out the leaner types of meat that doesn't taste as good with slow cooking. Uh, now if the meat's more fattier, then that's really perfect for slow cooking. But lean meats like this, you, d you generally don't want to slow cook. So as you can just see here, I'm chopping the meat up into about one inch medallions, which I'm going to further chop up into basically like one inch cubes. So slow cooking is great, but you can also cook all your meat in the oven. Um, just have a big oven sheet and then lay out all your meat on there, season it the way you want to, throw it in the oven, and um, your meat would typically be done within 20 to 30 minutes. The problem with cooking in the oven is you have to watch it and you could easily overcook your meat. I don't know about you guys, but where I live right now, it's the summertime and I really don't like cooking in my house and adding more heat to it than I already have. So I find that eliminating cooking in the oven during the summertime helps keep the temperatures a lot cooler in my apartment. In the winter time, the oven's great. I like using the oven. I definitely will not be grilling in the winter just because it's cold and it's rainy, so I avoid that. So as you can see here, I just chopped up my meat into one inch chunks, threw it in a Ziploc bag, and I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to the side and start chopping up my chicken. So you're gonna do the same exact thing for the chicken. You're gonna chop off all of the fat and then kind of the excess pieces. If I bake the chicken in the oven, then I'll keep on the little riblet right here. But if I don't bake the chicken and I grill it, then I'll chop that off. So you're just gonna go ahead and chop the meat in the direction of the grain and um, try to get all the pieces uniform because if the pieces are the same size, it helps even out the cooking process and you won't have some pieces of meat uncooked while other pieces of meat overcooked. So yeah, la the last method is grilling. Grilling is awesome because you can put a ton of meat on the grill and get it all done at once and it really does a great job of locking in or sealing in all the flavors and juices. So especially if you're marinating your meat overnight, which we're doing here for this kebab recipe, Throwing it on the grill is gonna really lock in all those flavors and, and keep your meat juicy for all the meals that you're gonna be preparing for your meal prep. I'm showing you guys here how I chopped the chicken and I'm throwing it in a Ziploc bag. And now we're gonna talk about the kebab recipe. So it's Diet 7 Up. I use the less sodium soy sauce. I use black peppercorn and I use garlic powder. All it is is four ingredients. It's super simple, but it tastes awesome. So the first thing I do is I throw in the less sodium soy sauce. I like to do my ratios of about one to three. I don't really measure it just because I'm not too worried about exact measurements. So I'll just fill it up until I'm about one third full of the Ziploc bag. And then I'll go ahead and throw in a bunch of garlic pepper. I mean, you gotta remember you have a ton of meat in there. So you wanna make sure every piece of chicken gets a lot of garlic and a lot of pepper, which I'm currently cracking in the bag right now. And then lastly, I'll throw in the Diet 7 Up to kind of mix all the spices and then you want to make sure that your chicken is completely submerged in liquid. So I'll fill it above the top of the chicken and then I'll go ahead and seal the bag and shake it up really fast to make sure that everything gets mixed together and then squeeze all of the air out of the bag just to make sure that each piece of chicken is getting fully covered by the liquid marinade and then I'll go ahead and throw that in the fridge after. So we're gonna do the exact same recipe with the beef. Throw this in the fridge overnight. It, it should marinate for about at, at the minimum amount of eight hours. If it's marinating longer then that's totally fine. So and then we're gonna go ahead and talk about the rest of the meal prep so I'm gonna show you guys how to meal prep rice sweet potatoes and broccoli all right so the rice cooker is really easy I just have one cup of white jasmine rice 
and then if you can see here there's these little lines on the bowl and all you have to do is fill up the water to that line so since I have one cup of rice I'm gonna fill it about to that one generally I'd make four cups of rice but I already have rice so this is just for demonstration purposes so once you have the rice with the water in there you're gonna go ahead and close this and then all you have to do is turn it on and then press white rice all right I also have sweet potatoes already made but I'm just gonna show you guys what I do really quick all you do is you take your whole sweet potato, you don't have to do anything to them. You just wash them in the sink right here, just give them a quick scrub, and then you'll throw them in there. You can fit a good amount, they don't all have to be touching the bottom. So just fill it up until it reaches the top, and then you're gonna go ahead and cover the lid right there. So you hit select, and I generally do it for about eight hours on low heat. So when you, if you do this overnight, when you wake up, you'll have a whole thing of sweet potatoes ready to go. All right, now for the broccoli, I have a big bag right here, and this is florets, so you don't have the big stems on them, which is really nice. So you're just gonna go ahead and throw this in here, as much broccoli as you want, and then you're gonna go in here, and then you wanna make sure you, you rinse out your broccoli. All right, and once you have your broccoli all rinsed out, you're gonna fill this pot up with water. And I like to make sure that my broccoli can completely be submerged in water. And then I'll just go ahead and turn this on high, and then this is gonna boil, and once it's fork tender, then it's done. So I'm gonna let this boil while I start making the kebabs. All right, so I'm gonna start my kebab prep. This can get pretty messy, but just you wanna make sure you have everything ready to go. So I have my sticks right here. And then I have a bunch of tomatoes I'm gonna slice up and then a bunch of onions too. Basically, you're just gonna cut the tomato. You're gonna roughly chop it so it's as big as the meat pieces. And same thing for the onion. You wanna make sure that when you peel them off, it's about the same size as the meat. So that way everything cooks evenly and it's not really jumbled. Every time I chop onions, I cry. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know how to fix this. If you know a way to fix this, let me know because I hate crying. All right, so this is a good amount of vegetables to start with. I probably will need end up needing more. This is the part that gets really messy. You're gonna take all your meat and put it on here. Yes, your meat's gonna touch the vegetables, but don't worry, it's, it's all gonna get cooked, so don't freak out about that. I'm gonna alternate on the skewer, so I'm gonna go beef, and then I'm going to go tomato beef, and then onion. The reason why I do vegetables every other piece of meat is because we're not too big on vegetables, so this is just a good way to fit your vegetables in, but you're not getting a ton of vegetables. All right, that's one down. You wanna make sure they're kind of squished in. It helps just kind of make the meat a little bit juicier and kind of marinates the flavors together. All right, so since chicken takes longer to cook than beef, you definitely don't want the chicken juices touching the beef because the beef's not gonna be cooking as long. So whatever's on the chicken might not completely die. It probably will, but just to be safe, we put a tin foil boundary so we're not mixing juices here. And it always helps if you have someone who can help you out. So Madison's chopping some, some more vegetables and I'm gonna get started skewering the rest of these chicken and vegetables. All right, so here's the finished product. We got all of our beef kebabs and all of our chicken kebabs. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this down to the grill and start cooking. Son. All right guys, the kebabs are done, so the hard part is all done. Now it's time to basically put everything in a container. So these are three types of containers that I have here. This is obviously gonna be the basic one. This is like just a standard plastic container. You can get a bunch of these for really cheap. I don't really like using these because they're plastic, so you're gonna be microwaving in plastic. And then the snap, these are not always the most secure. So if you're like bringing it around in a bag, they, stuff could leak or the pop could pop off really easily. So I don't typically like these, but if you're going for a lot of containers for really cheap, then this is probably your best bet. So I don't usually use those. These are what I usually use. These are the glass containers. This brand is Pop It Glass. I think I got it on Amazon. So I really like the glass containers because they're really easy to clean. And if you microwave it in glass, you have nothing to worry about. And then this lid right here, I don't microwave it with the lid on, but it has like a tight lock seal. So when you put it on and you snap it, 
It's a really tight seal, so you can put this in any bag and it won't leak at all. Really, really sturdy. So the only downside to this is it is glass, so it's a little bit heavy and it can break. And then this I actually just got, so I haven't even used this yet, but this is a meal prep container by Eco Vessel. And it's really cool because obviously it has a little cutout for your silverware. And then you open it up and it expands. So you can pop it up and then you have a much bigger container. And this is made out of silicone, it is BPA free, and you can microwave it, so there shouldn't be any issues microwaving in this kind of material. It should also be really easy to clean because it is like a silicone type material, and it doesn't look like anything will stain this or stick to it. If you guys wanna check it out, you can get it on ecovessel.com. Now we're going to weigh out our food. Put your meal prep container on there, just go ahead and power on. Go ahead and hit tear to zero out my container. So we are at zero now. Typically I do about five ounces of meat. I'm gonna go ahead and take my beef kebab here and then just go ahead and weigh out a little above five ounces because I'm not counting the vegetables. All right, so that's a little above five ounces. If you really want, you could, you could separate the meat from the vegetables and, and weigh it separately. All right, I'm gonna zero my scale out. Okay, so we're, at, we're on grams now, and this is sweet potato that I made in the slow cooker. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in there, a little more. All right, 101, close enough. And then lastly, I don't typically measure out my green vegetables, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add some of that broccoli I just steamed right there. And then that's pretty much it, guys. You got, you got your meat, you have your carbs, and then you have your vegetables. Um, you also got some tomatoes and onions from the kebab. So I would say that's a complete meal. Look at that right there. So that's typically a meal that I would prep whether I'm going to school or if I'm just eating at home. This is what I'd usually make. Obviously, I would, I would also add in chicken. I'd swap out the beef for chicken. And then I'd do a white rice instead of the sweet potato and a different meal just to switch things up. But I'm going to go ahead and... Close that, and then you have your meal ready to go. All right guys, and you don't have to pack every single meal for the entire week all at once. What I typically do is I pack all my meals for one day because I don't have enough of those really nice containers to pack like weeks worth. And I also don't want my fridge just stocked up with containers. What I do is I pack every single meal for one day and then when I come back home, I'll wash all those containers and then repack all my meals for the next day. You can pack all your meals at once if you want to, but I find it's just a lot of work that one day. All right guys, if you need help figuring out how much food to put in each meal, go ahead and watch that playlist that I made. It's going to be linked in the bottom and that should be able to help you guys figure out how much food to put in each meal. Comment down below what you guys wanna see next and I'll see you guys next time.